How are you? Happy Sabbath, everybody. Happy Sabbath to all. Ah, I forgot to invite the people, them, the people, them. I am so happy. It's the Sabbath. Come rest a while. Come and rest a while. Yeah. How's your week? How has your week been? Paulette, welcome. How are you? Happy Sabbath to you. Roosevelt, hey, hey, hey. Let me come up. Why is this so hot? Did they mess with my settings? <laughs> they messed with my settings must hey richard happy sabbath to you bernadette happy sabbath to you did they mess with my brand somebody messed with it i think somebody messed with it let's try this again 
Yeah, that's better. <laughs> These newbies just come up in the stream yard. Just start messing with stuff. Welcome, welcome all who are streaming at the Patmos Chapel Seventh-day Adventist Church. I'm so excited about what's going on in our church. I love, love, love when people start coming in and 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 um and 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 learning technology and and better ways to minister. You know, just to know, just let you know that Sabbath night school was the first. Then came the squad squad or quad squad and friends. Now we got the journeymen and all kinds of things going on with the ministry. So good to see everybody. Mommy, happy Sabbath to you. Didn't come by today. Was doing a lot of business, but uh, it went well. All the kinds of business are going well. Um, you know, I won't be by tomorrow either, but or maybe later. I'll I'll let you know. Uh busy, 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 Bernadette. Bernadette, how are you? Glad you made it through. Praise God. Well, let's jump into the lesson. I got time today. Got time today. So, so, so happy to be here. So this week, a uh, shout out to Stacy Brew. She's watching. Um, she was in church for the first time after the probably six weeks, probably two months, maybe. Um, so happy that she was there to testify. And I don't know, Stacy. Just let you know. Just to let you know, girl. I cried. I cried, girl, after that first visit. I cried in prayer to God for you. Um, you're a great, 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 great mentor and friend. And so I'm so grateful to God that he uh, spared your life. Hey, Jan. Hey, D. Um, but I went, I went to... Uh, See Stacy this week. Hang out with her and Orly. Hang out with her and Orly. We watch the news together. <laughs> My buddy. I was looking. Have you seen me of late looking at the Bible? I don't know if you noticed these past couple of weeks when I look at the Bible. <laughs> I'm looking at the Bible like this. <laughs> Right, so of recent, I find myself, you know, and I'll never forget. My cousin told me it's gonna come out of nowhere, and all of a sudden, I start doing this. I start doing this. Now, I've always had headaches. I've, you know, don't have problems driving at night because I'm squinting, but I never had an issue where I couldn't read, you know, easy. She said, try these, try, here, here, try these, try these, try, put them on, here, here, <laughs> in her own special way. So I put the glasses on, her glasses on, these are mine, fake glasses, these are my computer vision glasses. And I look at my cell phone and I see words for the first time. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I see them so clearly, like, I shouted like, wow, I yelled in the house. Happy Sabbath journey. Join the journey. Happy Sabbath to you. Yes, yeah, Sister Carter. <laughs> so she was like, she's like, um, yeah, it's it's time for some glasses. It's time to make that appointment. <laughs> I mean, I I I I I exclaimed and the way, because even when I looked at first, when I put them on and I was looking at the TV, I was like, this is blurry. This is, this doesn't work for me. And she said, look at the, look at the, look at the phone. And I looked at the phone. <laughs> Revelation. Revelation. 
sight beyond sight d sight beyond sight i was and i was just i was just amazed amazed yeah d i can see clearly now i had one of those weeks i had i had a week of clarity i had a week of clarity oh my god clarity of vision and and i was just kept i kept <laughs> she laughing at me because I, I i kept her glasses on i kept looking at i couldn't believe how crisp and clear the words were and then when i took the glasses off and looked at the words i realized how blurry they were now all this time i could read i read the words i could understand the words but i could I, it might have been just my brain it might have been just my brain interpreting the words for me well because i i could read the words i could still read the words now and i read the words now here too but i find myself i need to do this but when i have the glasses on it was just they were big the words were bigger <laughs> and bolder my girl what is going on happy sabbath it's good to see you that you don't uh that you don't in you. yeah you A laughed at me richard <laughs> i know you you've been saying stuff on facebook kind of cryptically and you know i've been praying for you so i'm glad i hope everything is going well Thank you. Uh, I had a we had a death in our family. Okay. So that was, was part of what was going. On. But God be yeah. praised, everything is working itself out. Yeah, yeah. Well, let me correct myself. God is working everything. God out. is working everything out. God will work out everything out for you. He will. I'm a believer in that. Um. I'm talking about my 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 ad, final acceptance that I need glasses. Child. You know. I went through that a few years ago. Yeah. But my cousin used to say it happened around 43. You know, I, I, I didn't, you know, maybe I needed it back then, but I, I didn't see it. But you know what? You know what did it for me? Because like I said before, I have I've had friends that have told me I needed glasses before, right? But what Stacy did for me. This is power, and, and, and I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm going somewhere with this because it's in revel it's revelation, you know, to to the what the lesson is talking about. What Stacy did for me was she put the glasses on my eye. You know, there's some people that say stuff, right? But they don't care enough to actually say here, here, right, right, right. Stacy, Stacy put the, she put the glasses, you know, and, and different people have to know how to deal with different people. That's, that's, that's how I've learned life is right. You want to, you know, when hear something funny, when I was going through that, the doctor had to do that for me. The doctor had to do it for you. I went, mm. um, so I work for the union I work for, gives you vouchers to get your eye tested every two years. Yeah. The last time I got my eyes tested was 2017. I was due to get mm -hmm. it tested again in 2019, mm -hmm. which is when I moved from New York to New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of the places didn't accept my insurance and all of that. I had to get everything switched over, which happens, you know, after open enrollment, everything kicks in in the new year. And then shortly after that, everything shut down because of COVID. Yeah. So I never got them tested. So I was like, you know, COVID's done. Let me get tested. I haven't had, had a test in a while. And this was summer before last. And I go and the guy is like, you must have sustained an injury sometime in the last five years to your right eye. You were legally blind in your right eye. I have had perfect yeah. vision my whole life. And he's like, you're legally blind in your right eye. And yeah. I'm like... 
I can't be because I can see. This I'm, right. I'm telling the doctor this. I can see. Yeah, I can see. Yeah. And he's like, no, you're legally blind. Mind you now, I had been started on hypertension medicine and stuff. And mm-hmm. they had been, the last year, they had been adjusting it because I kept having headaches and dizziness. And they were like, your blood pressure is not under control. Yeah. And he was like, no. He, so he, So the doctor says to me, well, you know, I'm surprised that you're not having symptoms because you're so blind in your right eye. You've probably been having headaches and dizziness from the left eye compensating for the right eye. Right. And I'm like, huh. So it's not mm-hmm. the blood pressure. Because mm-hmm. I was having the headaches and the dizziness. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, but I can see. I don't need the glasses. And still, mm-hmm. after after he's pointing out the symptoms. Right. And he put me in the machine where they do the adjustment of the lens mm-hmm. to show me what the prescription would be. And mm-hmm. he was like, this is what you see now. And I was like, yeah, I can see. And then he was like, this is what you're going to see when I give you the glasses. And he put the thing on. And I was like, oh. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't realize how blurry things were. I didn't realize how blurry things were until he put that into perspective with and flipped that proper lens onto my eye and corrected until my he, vision until he put the right lens in front of on my eye. Mhm. That's it. This is a word from the Lord. We could we could we could do the benediction now. But we won't. Let's pray. Father in the name of Jesus, thank you so much for experiences. Oh, my God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for experiences. And I am grateful. I am grateful. I am grateful. I am grateful. So, Lord, open up our eyes today to see your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah, Dad, I got, I'm going to walk in your footsteps. I got to get glasses. Um, definitely at least reading glasses, but I'm going to get my eyes checked. Um, and you know, I, I, I came to some kind of, um, acceptance last year when I, when, in October, when I got vision for the first time for my insurance. So I knew this year I was going to go get my eyes checked. I knew I was going to get my eyes checked, but I've been belaboring it. But once she put the glasses on my eye, I made the appointment. You understand? I have the vision insurance already. At least last year, the years before, I didn't have the insurance. I've been dilly dallying. But once she put the, I didn't, no more, no more, no more games. Join the journey. We adjust our, or accommodate bad vision until we see more clearly. <laughs> oh, joy in the journey. We or adjust or accommodate bad vision until we see clearly and honestly for me and i and i learned this from one of my closest friends today he said people don't see what they see until they see it (laughs) people don't see what they're supposed to see that's what he said People don't see what they're supposed to see until they see it. And we're going to learn how God is the only one that can help people see what they're supposed to see. It is God that puts the glasses on in humanity. It is God who put the gla- who puts the glasses on humanity, and we're going to talk about who these glasses, who this glasses is. The lesson on Sunday um, Sabbath says: Error flooded into the church as leaders merged truth of Scripture with popular customs. Merged truth of Scripture with popular customs. Powerful. I underlined it and I feel like people, okay, let me ask you a question. Why do people merge customs with truth? Popular customs of the day 
you merge it with the truth. Why why do why do people do that? What's the what's the motivation as to why people do that? Sunday's lesson. Do me a favor and read. My Bible reader is in the house. John chapter 8, verse 44. You belong to your father. Mm. Ooh. Sorry, this is a new international version. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native tongue, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Mercy. Ooh. Sorry, I'm just, that's deep. I'm changing the version. I got to see what it said in the King James Version. <laughs> you of your father, the devil. I talked about who, who, I talked about that last week. Liars. Liars are, are Satan's, Satan's sons. Mm. Satan's daughters. Compromise. D says the reason why people mix truth and error, mix truth in the customs of the world is to compromise. It's just easy. It's to, it's to make, it's for popularity. Yeah. The truth, how do I say this? The truth is a standard, right? So the truth, absolute truth is unyielding, hard, mm -hmm. like a unyielding. rock. Unyielding. Right? Yeah. But when you come up against something that's unyielding, it can be unpalatable. So right. when you mix custom with truth, you're adding sugar to the medicine. Listen, quote unquote. Let's let's talk about let's like talk Mary about Poppins. Should, a spoon should may of the sugar makes the medicine go down. <laughs> right. Uh, listen, I love that medicine knows it tastes good. Medicine is actually killing dangerous things that are destructive to the body. But they taste it tastes nasty. So I love the way you said it, Veggie Donut. It just makes it more palatable. Like hard truth, nobody wants to hear hard truth. Um <laughs> And the sad part is when you dilute the medicine, it loses its efficacy, right? Yeah, yeah you don't so, change. So when you dilute the truth. Because truth is supposed to do what? What is truth supposed to do, guys? Truth is supposed to affect change. Okay. Truth is supposed to affect change. Truth is supposed to deal, lead to change, right? Change is in lifestyle changes of behavior changes of mindset right but if you if 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 you don't want to change or you want to change but you don't want truth then you won't change you won't change do people want to change let's see what people have to say do people want to really want to change richard says to feel comfortable and have convenience Yep. Free. Truth sets you free. Truth is freeing. It sets you free. Truth is supposed to lead to transformation. I was watching Eric Thomas this past Sabbath or two Sabbaths ago. Uh, I watched a rerun. Amazing. He talks about Harriet Tubman, how he said she says that you know it's a rumor. People say that she really didn't say it, but whatever. She tried to. She could have freed much more if they knew they were, if they knew they were slaves, right? And he talks about he talks about how her greatest enemy weren't the people that were coming for her, right? Like she didn't carry the gun. <laughs> This is powerful. She didn't carry the gun to protect herself from the men who were on dogs trying to get her. She carried the gun for the people who, after deciding to come with her, 
right, decides to turn back. And she knows that if they turn back, right, then they'll catch, they'll, they'll be able to take them and they'll capture the whole, t the, the whole crew. So she said, well, you, you know, you, you either come with me dead or alive. <laughs> Harriet Tubman was no joke, right? She, she was tough, but she had truth on her side. Right, she was tough, but she had truth on her side. Um, it says Satan is the liar and the father of lives, lies. But truth, what I see in the lesson for Proverbs 23 23, John 17, 17, John 8, um, verse 32, it says it has power, it it has sanct it gives power for sanctification, it gives freedom, it gives wisdom. It gives understanding. That's what truth brings. Not only just freedom, but it brings sanctification. It brings power. It brings wisdom. It brings understanding. The nasty, unpalatable, sugar-free truth. Right? It is truth that brings light out of darkness. Uh, Richard says, I think people want to be changed, but they don't want to change. Meaning people won't, wouldn't mind something happening without their involvement. But to do what's needed is the challenge for a lot. That's right. And that goes, and that's what I'm saying. He's like, I'm free. You know, Eric Thomas, I'm free. Harry Tubman was like, I'm free. And I'm trying to let you know that I'm free and you're not listening. You want to have the same mindset. So the classic example that, that he was using was e economics, right? Economics says, you know, you got to, in, in order to have financial freedom, you got to have a level of education. You got to have low debt. You got to invest in multiple assets that appreciate in value. And you have to generate that for long periods of time and pass it on to uh, healthy families, like but, that will but, that have that same that have that same vision as you. So you have a vision, and you got to be around people with that same vision as you to create that level of wealth. Um, but you wanted to say something, Veggie Donut. I was gonna say what you're saying. I love it, and the comment that uh, what was the person's name, Richard. Mm -hmm. said, yeah. to your point, instead of doing that and educating or trying to save, we'd Get rather play lotter, play lotto and Flower. spend hundreds of thousands of dollars throughout the lifetime playing the lotto so the money can land on your doorstep, which is never coming. Ponzi schemes, <laughs> pyramid right. schemes, lottery. Doing what we should. Even if you don't, even if you don't have the resources to fully educate yourself to invest. You know, I have debt, let me pay it off. Or I need to save. You know what I mean? And do what you can until you can do more. Or you learn know more. what you don't do. You know what you don't do. Right. You get what I mean? Yeah, you know what you don't. You just don't do. You know, you know mm -hmm. what you don't do. You would rather do something that had has um risk high risk immediate rewards with but but high high failure rates mm -hmm. yeah but at least you, it was quick and easy you didn't have to do much you didn't have to in order to invest you got to do work and, and, and to invest in real estate you got to do work to invest in the stock market you got to do your homework you know to what really brought that out yeah you know what you don't do covid mm. or you for years, people have been talking about obesity as an epidemic in America and eating healthy and things to do. Mm -hmm. And when COVID hit, all the Pop-Tarts were left on the shelf. Nobody could find fruits and vegetables. Nobody could find the zinc wow. supplement. Nobody could find all the healthy food that people had known for years that they were supposed to be eating but never would eat. Most of their immunity. Mm -hmm. That is the, you know... You know, you know, yeah, you know, but you don't do, yeah.
like me you know you 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 <laughs> you know but you don't do that's deep right there that is that is powerful so why don't we do why don't we do we know but we don't do why don't we do this what is it tastes terrible it's don't hard taste for it. food prep it takes too much time Work. why do i have to Work. constantly wake up early to exercise uh why do i need to go watch this webinar on how to invest why do i need to save coins when i want to buy that thing that coat that's cute or the nail polish or the eyeshadow or Work. whatever it is why do i need to yeah convenience want laziness no, easy Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. Yeah. But I can see clearly now the rain is gone. I'm telling you. I met with some people this week about Phenomenal Stemist. Um, venture, so for venture capitalism, right? And what they were telling me about what I could be. <laughs> uh, it scared me. Right? Yo. So you listen, listen. Listen to what I'm saying. I mean, she Harriet Tubman did not play. Harriet Tubman was on a mission, and you know what? She was not palatable for most. And that she is my number one black women, woman in black history. That lady right there. She freed hundreds, I think thousands of slaves. She made multiple trips to free her people. Multiple trips to free her people, right? She never got caught. She never lost anyone. She also led a battalion, I think. She military. led um arm um a navy or she led mm -hmm. armed, armed forces, forces for the union. She was not easy. She had vision. And I'm telling you the things that they were telling me scared me. But you know what? And I was like, I was like, and he said something that was powerful. I was like, I don't know. I don't know if I could, I could, I don't know if I don't, I didn't feel, I was afraid. And one of them said, don't be your, don't be your own. He said, don't be your own bottleneck. <sighs> don't be your own bottleneck. Right. So why am I saying this? The possibilities are frightening. They're so big. But, 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 if you're going with God, any vision that is easily done is, is your thing, not God's. Because only God can do insurmountable things. And what they were talking were, were were huge, like bigger than I could even imagine. It was bigger than what I wanted to do. But you got to get people with that same kind of vision. You gotta you gotta get people that can handle the nasty. <laughs> God, like you gotta get people that can handle the nasty. That can handle the hard truth. That could, that, that wants to work. Go ahead, Freddie Donut. Well, when you were saying that the vision that the people were telling you was insurmountable, and you were saying you got to get people, my mind went to the paralytic. <laughs> talk to me. Talk to me. Holy Spirit, talk. Holy because Spirit, talk. He, Holy Spirit, talk. He wanted to be healed, but he didn't see how he was getting in the house. He had to get people who was like, no, we're taking the roof off this mug. <laughs> Speak. 
That's where See, that's where godly you, friends come in. Not just godly friends. Yeah. Friends that want to take the roof off. Mm-hmm. Friends that want to take the roof off. Friends that will, if they can't, if they can't get through the door, they'll go up and they'll by any means necessary. They mm-hmm. want to take the roof off. Like they're gonna get you to God. They're gonna get you to the thing that God has for you. Mm-hmm. He was here to his friend's faith. Listen, Gideon. Gideon. Not the ones that are doing this. What, what, what was it? Not the ones. What, there's two types of doing yeah. this. Uh-huh. And one who had their face down to the water. Mm-hmm. Who, who the face down to the water? Which one is the good one? I don't remember. I believe. I remember talk the two to different people. types. This or down to the water? Which one? Let's see what they say. I, I'm waiting for the people. Joy in the journey. Take off the take the roof off, friends. Take the roof off, friends. Ah, uh, where I'm going, I need take the roof off, friends. And where I'm going, I need. I believe it's the ones that put their mouth dr- directly in the water. I'm looking up the story. Mm-hmm. Shelly D, it says it takes courage, it takes sacrifice, and 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 I'm telling you, not everybody wanted to go with Harriet Tubman. Yeah, Conve- um, knowledge is not enough. Shelly D says. No, not Toya. Hey, I mean, sorry, not Toya. Not Naaman Toya. I'm talking about Gideon. Oh, but you give me another example. Naaman. Another Naaman. No, not once, not two times, not three times. Nope, not four times. All right, I'm out. I'm not going in this stupid, dirty water. You need servant girls. Like, but, but master, I mean, you know, you might as well just do what he says. Okay, okay. Five times, the six who laughed times, at seven. The, water, mm-hmm. the ones who laughed at the water were so allowed the, to stay. Okay. They laughed at the water. Let's see. Versus God what's told the Gideon. Um let me see here. To take the water the men down to drink. Those who bow down to drink, as well as those who drank directly from the water like a dog. Only three hundred men who had lapped the water, were allowed to remain. Lap the water. Mm-hmm. Judges Lapped 6 through water. 8. Oh. From Lapped over 22,000 down to 300. The people who looked up and drank. Was it t- looked up or that? Or lapped? Lap- Maybe lap the water means they were they were ready for battle, so they kept their heads up mm-hmm. while they drank? Versus the one yeah. that was just all... Yeah, judges... Judges chapter 7, verse 6. Lap that water. Yo, where you're going, where you're going, we got to get water lappers. We got to get take the roof off type of friends. Rebecca says, "If if you want something bad enough, you will do whatever it takes to get what you want. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sunday's lesson. What is the danger of... See, I, I can't even read my own writing. <laughs> oh, man. What is the danger of, I think it's compromising priests? Oh, no, 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 no. I got it now. What is the danger of unprincipled Priests, you're talking about earlier, it's about the principle, right? Unprincipled priests blocking the word. What is the danger, right, of people who are unprincipled blocking? We're going to move on to one, Monday's lesson as, as you guys answer that question. If you want something bad enough, you will do whatever it takes to get to get what you want. Yeah, absolutely. Savage Wolves. 
Savage Wolves. Do me a favor, read Acts chapter 20, verse 30. Betty Donut, read Acts chapter 20 and verse 30. Hey, Jason okay. from Wisconsin. I'm reading back from the NIV again. Mm -hmm. Even from your own number, men will arise and distort the truth in order to draw away disciples after them. Mm, even from among yourself, even from your, so listen, you got unprincipled ple priests blocking, blocking, right? You got people from amongst your own selves coming in and drawing people away from the church, right? Your own, uh, your own selves shall men arise. And they would speak perverse things to draw away disciples. You see, what's the issue with unprincipled priests? It's because they, they're they they're men of God. I don't know what you guys have to say, but to me, they're men of God where people trust the men of God, but then they're unprincipled. So they say they're godly, but then they don't follow principles. And so, so you like, oh, well, I, I got to dare say they're men of God. They're popes and prelates and priests. Like th the danger is you'll, you'll f easily be deceived from people who you trust. You're easily deceived. Listen, these, these Ponzi schemes and things like that, they usually come from people who you trust. You, 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 they, they, they develop a level of trust so they say okay this is this is my this is my family this i mean you have elders in the church doing Do this you kind remember, of remember um the gentleman who was written about in the news mm -hmm. last name alexander yeah it was in florida wasn't he Either Flo it was no florida, new florida. york new york new york new york yeah all over i think they said over how many millions of dollars yeah he, he was a elder in the adventist elder. church he was an elder in the Adventist church. And he, and got he all went from church to church saying that God had given him a, a, a business plan and asking for people to invest. And they did because they trusted him. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When people talk about invest, like it would be one thing to teach you how to invest yourself. <laughs> That's what I look for. I, I I want people to teach me how to invest myself. Shout out to Brandon Ford, who is a real estate broker. Like, I, <laughs> get with people who want to teach you how to get it yourself. Don't get with people like, oh, well, you give it to me. Give me the money and I'll do it for you. That's 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 red flag number one. Where, where's the big red flag? I don't have my big red flag. Red flag number one. Oh, just give me the money and I'll do it for you. I love this text. Second Timothy, second, second Thessalonians 2 verse 7. Uh, find it for me. I, I don't remember which text this it is. It's between 7 and 12 where it says God will set a strong delusion. Find, just read that text. Out of, the, out of the four chapters okay let me see the danger of of people from within it causes followers to be distracted causes people to be confused they have a level of trust the danger is that in the last days false prophets will arise we have a man who comes to our church on saturdays in pushing passover and everyone must keep it can you tell us what to do i can't tell you what to do jason <laughs> second Thessalonians. <laughs> Second Second Thessalonians 2 verse two. 11. Uh, For this thing. reason, God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie. Have you ever been delusional? Yeah. Do you know what the delusion means? What does delusion mean? Candace. Candace says, yes, the ones that lap the water, they're the ones that stayed. Yeah, yeah, I guess you were some lapping, lapping folk, you know, lap the water. Ain't nothing wrong with the people who sat up and sat and drank the water. Ain't no ain't, ain't nothing wrong with the people who, who prayed for their friend to get healed. Get you some that will go up on the roof, take the roof down. Um, I was talking to one of my uh mentors, and he was like, 
you, I could tell you are all in type of person and it's beautiful. <laughs> That's like, thank you. Like all in, like all in, all in. And it's okay not to be all in. Uh, but get you some all in friends, get you some all in people. That's that's the Gideon people. That's the 300 that God needed to accomplish something that is insurmountable. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Anything less than that just can't be done with not all in. Right. Uh, Monday's lesson. Have you ever been delusional? So people come from amongst themselves. And it's God that sends a strong illusion. That don't sound right unless I don't have the good understanding or like I know what under delusion means. But when people think, what do you think people think? Talk to me in the chat. What does it sound like the text is saying versus I'll talk about what it really saying. And God, read it for me again. Verse 11. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie. Wait a second. God is sending a delusion so people can speak, believe a lie. What does that sound like? Don't that sound like something wrong with God? Why is God no. sending us delusions? Do you it's know what is what does delusion mean? What does delusion mean? When somebody is delusional, what is, when somebody is delusional, what is that? When you mean? live in the land of Delulu, you believe things that are not real. Or uh yeah, you believe things that are not real. You, you adjust, your reality is adjusted, and it is not in sync with with the rest of what everybody else deems reality. But that's an illusion. That's not no, a delusion. That's not an illusion. That's delusion. A strong sure? false belief. An illusion is something that might look real, but is not. Uh huh. A delusion. Okay. Is a belief. Illusion is outside, looks real, but it's not. Delusion is coming from within. Okay. Okay. Delusion characterized by holding false beliefs or judgments about external reality that are held despite. Here's the crick kick thing, right? So, mm -hmm. illusion, illusion. A thing that is likely or wrongly perceived or interpreted by the senses. So I want you to understand. I feel like both of them are external. Oh, well, me, no, 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 no. You're right. You're right. You're right. It starts from the belief, from their brain. I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is they're seeing something, Right. Or hearing, yeah. Or hearing. It's some kind of central information. An Think illusion. about a paranoid schizophrenic versus someone at a magic show. Correct. So from the outside, it you see it. It appears to be one thing, but it's not. But delusional is you have insurmountable evidence that the sky is blue. I see the sky to be blue. But no matter how much I see and how much scientists have showed me that the certain light patterns that makes the sky blue, I say, I don't care what you say about anything, the sky is red. I believe the sky is red. No matter how much evidence has been shown to me. So when God brings a strong delusion, this is what it means. It doesn't mean that God is going to get give us a strong delusion so that we will believe a lie. So God is making us believe lies. God is not making us believe lies. What it is, is God, listen to me. Now let me take myself time with this. God is revealing the truth extremely clearly extremely clearly like it makes very good sense insurmountable evidence god is giving straight insurmountable evidence but the person decides that they will believe a lie instead god's truth is so powerful that the delusion is that strong 
Because ain't nobody more truthful than God. And if you still decide to believe a lie, you are strongly delusional because God gives the greatest level of evidence. So for you to still believe a lie, you have a stronger delusion than the truth of God's strength. That's what it means. He's revealing himself so much that he is a God of love. And if you still decide that he's not, you delusional. You delusional. Unrealistic expectations in thinking, as, as Betty Donut says, it's a belief system. No matter how much evidence is in front of them that tells them the truth, it's coming from within. It's a belief system. Trevor Byfield, my father, says 45 is delusional. <laughs> The guy who set himself on fire outside of the car office is delusional. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, Lynette, happy Sabbath to you. I think that, I don't know if you remember some time ago when we talked about the power of choice. Mm -hmm. I think that this goes back to that. Yeah. If you choose to believe the lie despite the truth that God presents, eventually God is going to be like, all right, that's your choice. Yeah. And, I don't let think... you and let you believe the lie that you have embraced. And, and the fact, listen, I don't think God, that's kind of what reality sisters are saying. God lets us believe a lie or God allows us to be delusional. I, I believe God causes us to be delusional. Why? Because he he's the he's the insurmountable evidence. Like there ain't no better evidence than God. So if you still believe a lie, you delusional and you have the strongest level of delusion because you don't believe God. I don't think it's about allowing. It's about he, he is presenting himself as clear as possible. But you decide to still believe a lie. Yeah. He's not sending a delusion in my opinion. See, that's what I'm saying. I don't think you send a delusion. Okay, listen to what I'm saying. It's 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 a it's about the evidence that provides the delusion. Like you're not delusional. My bad. Didn't realize I'm not plugged in. I'm not plugged in. Let me not get, let me not get kicked out. This is a word. A delusion is caused by insurmountable evidence. Like if it wasn't, if you weren't so sure, like, you know, oh, the sky looks gray. The sky looks blue. What? Gray, blue, gray, blue. Like you're not so sure. You don't have that much evidence to really back out whether, you know, you're not delusional because it's just not enough. It's not enough evidence to really be sure. Right. But the, if, if there is a lot of evidence and you still believe that the sky is red, then that's a problem. And so God is that great level of evidence. So the more God, the more truth you have, the more delusional you are. And your delusion is based on the insurmountable evidence. And so what I'm saying is you're delusional because the Bible says God sends a strong delusion. That's what it says. Not because he's trying to cause you to believe a lie, but, but the fact that you still believe a lie <laughs> in spite of all his evidence, that's an issue. Hi, Beverly. How are you? That's verse 12. Go ahead. What, is, what does it say? And so that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth, but have delighted in wickedness. Delighted. This is the con. Listen, John 3, 16. We love to quote it. We love to quote John 3. Oh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish and have everlasting life, right? For God sent not his son to the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Everybody loves to speak that. God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. But verse 19 says, 
But this is the condemnation. This is the condemnation. That light has come into the world. But men have decided, I'm adding scripture to it. You know what? I'm not going to I'm not going to say have this. But men loved darkness rather than light. Because their deeds were evil, because their actions were evil. This is the condemnation. God does not that God did not send his son to condemn the world. God came to save the world, but the condemnation is still there. Why? Cuz men love darkness. Men love darkness. Back to our original story. It's like the doctor saying, you are legally blind and me can see. And the doctor changing the lens to show me my correct vision and me saying, no, I can still see and choose not to get the glasses and stay blind. That's right. Stacy, put the glasses on my eye. And so I don't know what you're talking about, Stacy. Everything is fine. Then, then, then stay blind. See, it would be one thing if if my homegirl didn't give me the glasses. Stacy gave me the glasses. I put the glasses on. If I had decided to say no, I don't want to wear glasses. So let me lie to Stacy and say, I don't. I, there's no difference. <laughs> or say nothing. Take the glasses off and not make the appointment, then I'm delusional. I'm delusional. I'm delusional. Men love darkness rather than light. K Boogie, I'm with you homegirl. Bible said what it said, he's sending it. And I, what I'm saying to you though, he's sending it in the context of he's revealing the best truth that ever, ever, ever happened. Rico, Hey, how are you doing? Happy Sabbath. Happy Friday. Michelle, happy happy Sabbath to you. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Good to see you all. I got time today. I'm not rushing through this one. So, yes, K-Boogie, I'm just on Tuesday. Safeguarded by the word. I know, I know K-Boogie's like, Tuesday! <laughs> yes, I got time today. I got time today. Who chooses error is obviously deluded. If you if you choose error, you're 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 deluded. God is clear. God is God is clear. Bernadette says, "Do not lead on our own understanding." I was gonna say, um, God is clear. But back to that point about unprincipled leaders in the church. Mm -hmm. You brought out the economic example, but there are way more examples than economic. There okay, are give me some. churches that call themselves Adventists where you have men behind the pulpit who are wearing dresses. You have men behind the pulpit who are coming out as homosexual, you know, and lead, and, and telling their congregations that, Oh, when the Bible says this is an abomination, that's not what it really means. It's okay. So there's a lot of different ways, not just economic where people can be, led away from God's word. That's and true. The Lord. And, and it's based on what people want to do and the level of change that they want to experience. And also looking right? at people in the leadership positions who are telling them it's okay. It's okay. You know, I was thinking about, and I ain't judge, I ain't, I'm not judging anybody. I'm not judging myself in the context of what I was listening to this, this week. I was listening to, uh, let's say, 90s at 9, right? So we all fall short and come, we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. Um, and I was thinking about, I was jamming to, I was jamming to Drew Hill. So Drew Hill song. <laughs> Y'all know that song? Uh, Child. Uh, <laughs> don't even go there. Because I, I was just, drew him I was is, just is it. came compared I'm to what I was listening to today. Okay. <laughs> today was I, Friday before spring break. 
Hey! So I so, was playing some hip hop Tiny Desk concerts and listening to some other things. Yeah. So that that's all you listen, listen, we we pray for us people of God. Amen. But I us the song came out. The song came on. Um tell me, okay? That's what's gonna say the, the name of the song. And the jam was I was jamming and I was thinking back and I said, man, this song is just, you know, not, not, yeah, Richard. <laughs> How did you know? I didn't say that. You said it. You wrote it before I said it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I was like, woo. Pray for the single chick over here in these streets. And I said, Man, I remember when they were teenagers. I, I, it, it brought back to my memory when they were teenagers, and they were invited on when they first came out. Um, it must have been the nineties. They were invited on um, what you gonna call it? Like the Today Show or something like that. And they had their pastor with them. So Drew Hill is actually a community. It's not the name of a person. It's the name of a community where they're from. And the host asked, you know, how do you feel? They were, they were, they were, they were church boys. They were church boys. And they asked, how do you feel about coming out and singing secular music where you're, you know, from the, and their pastor was with them. And he said some kind of compromising thing. And he said, well, he said it's okay. And da, 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 da. And look where Drew Hill, especially Cisco, look where he went. Now, I don't, as I said before, I'm not in any judgment towards them because I was jamming to their song last week. <laughs> now, I'm not talking about when I was 16. I was jamming to their song five days ago, okay? So pray for the, pray for the elder. The key thing is I watched how they spiraled and they did so because they heard a word from their pastor that it was okay. And I think that's what you're saying, Veggie Donut, right? Yes. To, 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 to do what you know that might not be healthy for you. You seek after men who say they're of God and when they give the okay, you go full throttle in it. There, be careful, there is a dangerous because position to be to in when you represent God. Instead of thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the pastor instead of thus saith the Lord. Daniel said, <laughs> Daniel, I knew that was it too. Everybody, everybody, everybody knew the song. Everybody knew the song. <laughs> yeah. Listen. Choices. But be careful of seeking out people with itching ears. Yeah. Seek out people with itching ears. You got time, Michelle? Cool. So safeguarded by the word, right? So the word keeps us from evil with the truth. The word keeps us. It's a safeguard. The um, Sister White says, only those who have fortified their minds, fortified their minds, shall be able to stand in the last um, great deception or something like that. Only those who have fortified their minds with the truths of Bible scripture. Fortify it, like guard it. Scriptures are our safeguard. She said if that that's the chapter from um the great controversy. So don't worry, I'm not quoting Drew Hill and not LNG White for those of the people who love EGW. Okay. I, I, I put her in there today. <laughs> you gotta you gotta fortify your mind. The word must fortify. Right here's here's what I have it. It says it and it alone must be the final and ultimate standard for understanding sacred truth. Your pastor ain't the standard. The gospel artist ain't the standard. I'm not the standard. Your elders aren't the standard. Your Bible teachers aren't the standard. The Bible and the Bible alone must be the final and ultimate standard for understanding sacred truth so you can say all you want about what you think is okay what you think is all right keep doing that keep doing that keep doing that 
and you will find yourself. Richard Gunnell says he's sending it, meaning our delusion is so strong and overpowering that he released it to us despite the equally strong evidence. See, that's what I'm saying. I don't believe he's sending. <laughs> he is the evidence. He's, he's yes, I believe he's sending a delusion because he is the evidence. He's not sending something like some kind of woo. A delusion ain't something of woo. He is the strong evidence that sends a delusion. He's the evidence that sends a delusion. I think that's what I'm saying. Ivy says, mercy, so true. We all look for mentors to give the green light. Even when we don't realize. We look for people to give the green light. Guana. Go on with the green light. We are also the mentor rabbi figure to someone. So we ourselves shouldn't compromise. That's powerful, Ivy. We should not compromise. Yeah. God is the only standard of which we. God is the only standard. He's the only standard. His word is the only standard as to how we make decisions. So you can talk to whoever you want to talk to to make you your, your sin feel feel okay right? Talk to whoever you want to talk to to make your sin feel okay. It's cool. It's cool. How do we speak the truth in love, though? My niece is a freshman at Howard University, and it's so tough to give her godly wisdom without her feeling judged. That's powerful, Ivy. Um, That's a great question. Any elders out there who want to answer that? Um... I believe, so everybody says this, and I, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, I'm not innocent of this. The tone matters, right? But I've learned, I've learned that when somebody wants to believe what they want to believe, no matter how calm and peaceful and toned, respectful you put it, they're gonna believe what they want to believe right? So obviously tone matters. So tone matters. The way you say it matters. The relationship you have with the person, like you can't be somebody who we never spoke to before. And then all of a sudden you just talk, talk about, well, you can't dress this. You can't do this. You can't do that. Right. The relationship with the person matters. If you feel like you have a solid relationship with the person, you you're there for them in good times. You help them in other ways. I feel like you got to love them through love, not just through speaking the truth in love, but just plain old their own love, um, the love th that they need, right? And then um, then you just say it. I was going to, can I give an example of something that happened to me? Okay. So um, I work in the school. I'm a school nurse. And there was a paraprofessional who brought a student to me. And she's kind of on the anxious side. And we've been very friendly throughout the school year, always cordial, always encouraging to each other. But she would bring children unnecessarily to the nurse. Like I did a workshop on anaphylaxis and taught them about like hives and the different symptoms. And then the children went outside to play on a cold winter day and because it was windy and it's winter, his face got red. And she was like, his face is red. He's having an allergic reaction. And I'm like, no, he's just cold, you mm -hmm. know? And so when I was like, he's just cold. And I said it with a smile. I wasn't like rude or anything. She got upset. She got defensive. She was like, I'm not a nurse. I'm not a doctor. I don't know. I thought he was having an allergic reaction. And you're making me feel bad. And she really got angry with me, which shocked mm -hmm. me because I didn't think that. I, 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 I know I didn't say it any kind of way and I really didn't think I thought we were cool so I didn't expect that from her and she stopped talking to me for the whole school year and I remember saying to her before she stormed out of my office I said I'm not trying to make you feel bad I just want you to understand the difference because as the grown-up you have to be able to stay calm in high uh intense situations when that are involving the children and if you don't learn that can be a detriment to yourself and to the children. Mm. And she got mad, so she left. 
And she didn't talk to me again for the rest of the year until this year. Apparently, over the summer, she was diagnosed with allergies and she gave herself an, a dose of epinephrine. Uh, well, and she's without, already on the side. Without needing to. Yeah. Because she panicked and thought she was having an allergic reaction and she wasn't. Yeah. And doctors in the hospital were very rude to her and yelled at her for doing that. And yeah. said if she continues to do that, she's going to damage her heart. And they really scared her. Yeah, yeah. And she came to me to tell me that the doctors were so mean and they said these things and she's so afraid. And then afterwards, she was like, I'm sorry for being mad at you because now I understand what you were trying to tell me. Yeah. So my point of all of that is sometimes no matter how kindly you say the truth, no matter. it's not going to be heard until down the road but right mm -hmm. but they will remember that when no one else would tell them you were the one who cared enough to and they will come back may by god they may if they may come alive. back i i, yes. I ivy I'm, I'm not so i'm not even gonna be that optimistic there's some people who you've told the truth to the truth you revealed to them actually happened and they acted like it didn't happen <laughs> they are they're they're, they're like i don't know what she, you know so there are multiple types of situations yes after even like they'll deny it at first because you know that's what happens when you're delusional you deny it but then right. it but actually if you happens want to hear the truth you will come back if you cling to the delusion you won't or if you cling to the pride that the consequence of the delusion brought you won't either. You have to also be humble, right? You have to be humble enough. That person, when she did that and she got scared by the doctors, she was humbled and she came to you in her humility. This is like, you know what? What you said was right. But if you're not humble, you're not gonna do that, right? Even if the, what, you, what, what, what you said comes true, Yes. In which that's what happens. That's fair. You have two yes. types of people. You have people who are that proud that even after she went through that experience, she's still not talking to you about it. <laughs> right. True. Or you have the humble one to say, you know what? I went through this experience and what you said was going to happen actually happened. And my bad. And so, Ivy, your love has to contain it. Your love has to be powerful enough to manage both situations. Your love is your love. It's unconditional. It, it cannot be. God is not, God loves us this much that he gives us the unadulterated truth. And he loves us if we accept it and repent. And he loves us just as much as if we don't. You know how I know this? Because I'm reading the prophets. And I'm reading how passionate the prophets are through the power of the Holy Ghost. The God is speaking through the prophets to the people. And he is passionately loving the people who are he, who he is destroying. He says, I will destroy you. I'm going to destroy you. He's saying it all through Ezekiel. I'm reading it. Uh, it's heavy. And I'm like, I'm going to destroy you, God. How can you say I love you? He's saying, he's saying, your separation of me is this destructive and it's killing me inside. Just as much as somebody who decides, no, nah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to repent. I'm going to do what you say, God. He loves the wicked equally as much as he loves the righteous. Right? Classic example. I'm going to say LNG White again tonight for all the lovers. She compares how David bawled after Absalom, that same son that raped all of his concubines, that came after him to kill him and his soldiers. When his soldier killed Absalom and he got word of it, he wept like a baby to the point where his his journeymen were so angry at him 
It's like, how can you cry for so much for somebody who was trying to kill you and us all together? She says that Jesus cried like that when Lucifer was banished from heaven. That's how much love Jesus has for Satan. So my friend, you speak the truth in love in spite of the response of your niece. And preferably, she'll be humble. But if not, don't love her any less. You want to say something, Veggie Donut? I was going to say, start a prayer campaign before you talk to her. That God help you to yeah. love her with his love and not your own. Yeah. Because no matter how much we say we love people, as humans, our love is still conditional. Conditional. So ask God to help you to love her with his love, not your own. Yes. And he oh. will help you, not just to be able to have the unadulterated truth, but to give her her unadulterated choice. Ooh. Ugh. Unadulterated choices. Love it. Love it. Richard says, I had an elder that once told me salvation isn't a team sport. We can't depend on each other to make it. Can't. Can't. You can't depend on nobody to make it. That's right. You got to. You got to. Scriptures are our safeguard. None but those who have fortified their minds with the truths of scripture shall be able to stand in the, what is it, the, 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 the last, find it for me somebody in the Google, Google that, what is it the white saying, great controversy, script, shape, uh, scriptures are our safeguard. Copy and paste it in the chat for me. I love that quote. It's like, it's the final test, basically the final test. None but those who have fortified their mind. If you don't fortify your mind with scripture, you will convince yourself to do anything. You will convince yourself to do anything. And then when it backfires on you, you're like, oh man. Thessalonians 5.21, we need to prove all things in whole fast to which, which is good. Don't ever trust a man. He can get you into trouble. <laughs> Uh, Jason, you're right. Daniel says you have to be, you have to have some kind of relationship with them and speak in a loving, respectful way. That's foundational, Daniel. That's what I said earlier, right? You gotta, you got, you can't just come out of nowhere talking, trying to tell them what to do. You gotta have a relationship. You gotta love them too. You gotta love them how they need to be loved, right? Not just in word, but in deed. And then you gotta watch your, the, your tone, the way you speak to them. Absolutely. Um, but other than after doing all those things, you gotta tell them the truth gotta tell them the truth yeah yeah especially if god told you to tell them the truth tell them the truth not an elder but our personal experiences when i say elder i mean older people actually i don't mean an elder like like a, a church elder our personal experiences in situations speak powerfully then provide pray and provide scripture yeah pray first yes that's the same thing um yasmin was saying pray first pray first Pray first. Like to me, with me, and I was at, I was at a, a women's ministry event this past Sabbath book club. We're reading this book called um, Very Good. Everybody who's here in Patmos, I really I, I encourage people to read that book by Anita Phillips, um, The Garden Within. So the the women the women are reading that book. So I met with the women last week, Sabbath, and. Um, one of the elders, um, I'm blanking. One of our elders, um, S. Oh, I'm blanking. I'm sorry. Um, man, I'm getting old. The, it's not your friend. No, it's not my friend. But it's she's mm -hmm. she she just became an elder of the church. S. Anyway, I can't, my mind, my mind can't bring me back, bring back her name. Um, she's the superintendent of our church for Sabbath school. Ah, I know your name. I'm sorry. It just, it just left me. Anyway, she goes to a special place in prayer. She goes to a special place in prayer and sits there. And I do the same. I pray in one spot. I pray all everywhere in my house. But when I intercede with God about my situation, my life, I go to one place, right? You got to go to your war room. 
not just pray first, but like go to war in prayer, right? And 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 that's all you could do. There's, no, there's nothing else you could do. Richard Guanel says, I think we're just responsible to express Jesus's love when it's needed, express the principles in our own lives, be open to them at all times. That's that's another good. That's a good point too. You don't have to say anything all the time. Sometimes things need to be said, though. But to Rich's point, the majority of um, things need to be revealed through life, right? So a lot of people who say, will look at you and say, well, your life ain't good. Why should I follow what you have to say, right? So that's why, you know, I don't say a lot to a lot of people. And, 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 and the older I get, the less I say to less people. Um, however, however, the truth is still the truth, right? The truth is still the truth. But people aren't going to listen to you if your life is not up to par as to what they think life should be. That's another thing. They People have a different mindset about what a successful life is. And so they will only listen to people based on that. So that's so just mind your business too. That's what Richard is basically saying. And just live your life and let your life be a guide. And if they want to follow, they don't, they do, they don't. <laughs> yeah. Love the examples. Thank you. Thank you. Pride and shame will keep some people delusional. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Pride and, sh and shame. I love that. Shame will do that too. Shame will do that. Shame will do that. Um, love does reprimand. Yeah, but only when God says to. So God didn't tell everybody to reprimand. He only told the prophets. So and 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 every time I read in the prophets, they would be like, on the second day, the third month, the Lord said to me to say this. And it, they never just went off and said stuff to the people of God. The only time the prophet said something is when they were told at a specific time, a specific month. So listen, if you want to reprimand, make sure, make sure it is coming from the Lord and not you. Yeah. Make sure it's coming from the Lord and not you. And it, you got to You like, I, I, I talked to my, um, to Kara, we on this, this tip about, morning and evening worship um direction and reflection direction and reflection like i'm learning i'm praying in the morning if the lord says to to say stuff then you say stuff if the lord says to shut up you shut up like and then you come back in the evening and see if you follow directions a <laughs> oh god I, I i did this you didn't say that to me to do this today, but I did it. Maybe I shouldn't have, or I did what you told me that I said to do. So, and there's peace there. Richard says, sanctify the, God, the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that you have inside, in, in you with meekness and fear. Did they ask you? Did they ask you? Or did they ask you or did the Lord tell you? And what time did the Lord tell you? So that might be something that you could do. Every time you speak, make sure you write down, okay, it is it is Friday, April 19th, 924. The word of the Lord came to me. That's what I see in the prophets. That's what I see in the prophets. Yay, Maya, pride can paralyze. Yes, Maya, pride can paralyze rational action. Yeah, pride, pride. I, I guess I'm late. I'm, I'm late to reading y'all stuff. But yeah. Like, let it go. Let it go. Toya Charles, what's going on, my friend? Oh, no, no, no. That's not Toya Charles. Toya Charles is my is Toy Nika, t t my other friend with the t Taya, whatever. So Toya C, I think we should be also understand life is a journey. So we may not reap the benefits of seeing people change or come back. Yeah, that's that is life, you know? That is life. Or sometimes you may. Sometimes you may not. What is the difference between a reprimand and an indictment? 
look it up in the dictionary. <laughs> That's a no, good I'm asking because you said um, no. the prophets reprimand, um, love, you know, but I also think that love indicts in terms of because you don't have to say something to reprimand somebody. You living a righteous life or doing your best can be an indictment to people around you without you saying a word. That's true. Okay, so a reprimand is a verbal whatever. Indictment is just what people feel or just the result. Or showing up of the difference, I guess. Maybe. Look it up. I'm serious. When I say look up a dictionary, I really mean it. Like that's That's my best way of understanding. Um, but, but yeah, the prophets reprimand, the prophets were told by God at specific times to say things to people. Mm -hmm. Reality sisters, I have college age nieces to stay relatable, keep praying and when appropriate, share the scripture that would encourage her. That's a good one. That's a good one. Share scripture, plant the seeds, keep moving. That's I'm seeing all kinds of advice i see all kinds of advice um love plant the seeds keep it moving mm -hmm. don't expect anything in return yes this is very helpful very good reality sisters says god's never word will never return void yeah never return void uh, so god even loves the politicians in washington dc even though i don't vote for them why do why do pray for them the guide to guide the nations in the right way yeah pray for pray for the politicians even the delusion well even the delusional ones daddy <laughs> direct us prote not protect us he will do both for us yeah he will do all things for us uh none but those here it is richard thank you so much sir this is coming from J great controversy page 593 I, I believe this chapter is the scriptures are our safeguard none but those who have fortified the mind with the truths of the bible will stand through the last great conflict that's it the last great conflict to every soul will come the searching test shall i obey god rather than men human reasoning apart from scripture isaiah 53 verse 6 read that for me I said, I'm, I'm closing soon. Don't worry. I'm closing. I'm closing. I'm closing. Two more pages and I'm done. Isaiah 53, verse say? 6. Isaiah okay. 53, verse 6. Hey, hey Daryl. We all like sheep on. have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. We go our own way. It says in the lesson, discovering someone who knew the way and someone who had the ability to get us back to our de destination made all the difference for us. What does it feel like to go there? Why do people seek truth without God? Why do people decide to go their own way? Thankful, Thanks be to God for the people who put the glasses on for us, right? But why do we seek truth without God? That's Thursday's lesson. We go our own way, and when we go our own way, the iniquity and the destruction lies for us all. Don't go your own way. Don't choose your own way. Why? Questions. Wednesday. Why do we seek truth? Why do we we seek truth from people who want who who we know will tell us what we want to do? That's what we seek truth from people who we want to do X. We know the Bible says why, but we ask people who we know will tell us X because we know if we ask people over here that will tell us why we ain't. So we won't even ask the people over here. <laughs> we'll ask the people that we know will tell us X. Why? Why do we do that? Because we want to do our own thing. We want to do our own thing. It's all good. It's not all good. It's really bad, but you know, just be honest with yourself. Don't even ask. Just say, you know, I want to do X. So why am I? Why even ask the pastor if I if I should do X? You know, it, it, to make you feel good, to make the to make the poison go down sweet. You know, indictment comes with conviction. Kate Boogie says, you don't need to be convicted to get rent. 
re reprimanded. That's right. So that's why you can e indictment can be both verbal or the life somebody's living. You see somebody living the righteous life. You feel convicted in your spirit, right, about it, even if they don't say anything. Or if somebody tells you something, you feel convicted in your spirit, right? It could be either or. But reprimanded is just telling you something, but you don't have. I like that. I like that capability. Lastly, Thursday's lesson. Thursday, I'm going like Ivan. I ain't going to make it to two hours, though. Thursday's lesson, the battle for the mind. Do me a favor and read 2 Corinthians verses chapter 4, excuse me, chapter 4, verse 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. Our eyes are opened by the light of God. God be brings light from darkness. He put the glasses on. I learned this from Pastor Bushner. He, God, if he, he, he made, he, he didn't make me do anything, but he challenged me to look up the word sight, light, sight, light, in another word, in the book of John. And I found it in multiple chapters, sight and light, right? He says, God does not expect us to believe without seeing. He does, the faith is not believing without seeing. He gives us all of the evidence we need to stand on his word and move in faith. Faith is action based on off of belief in a God in which we've seen him do things for before. He gives us light. He gives us sight. He gives it to us. And now because of what we've seen, because of what the light that he, we've seen, we can now move in faith that what he's done before he will do for me God brings light out of darkness. And listen to what I'm saying to everybody who's struggling with people making decisions or you yourself are struggling in darkness. God will bring the light through the darkness. Your reprimand, your reprimand will not bring light through the darkness. Your reprimand will not bring light through to the darkness. It won't. It won't. Saying my unique glasses ain't gonna bring light through the glass darkness. Putting the glasses on her face, <laughs> putting the glasses on her face <laughs> will bring light to the darkness. Yeah. Yeah. Last text. Last text. John 1, verses 4 and 5. What is this light? John chapter one, verses four and five. I'm going to close with this. God brings light from the darkness. So no matter who you are, what you're going through, who your children are, what they're going through, they're in the midst of darkness. You are in the midst of darkness. It is God who's going to bring the light to transform your life. You got to take the light in though. You got to put the glasses on. John verse one, four through five. What in is this light? In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. You talking about Jesus? You talking about Jesus? My favorite text of scripture is Romans 5 8. What does Romans 5 8 say? But God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Favorite text of all time. And it came from, I've been a, I've been a Christian my whole life. I've been pretty, pretty straight laced my whole life. Walking in the ways of righteousness, literature, evangelism. Like I did it all spiritual. I've been spiritual my whole life, but I got caught up in sin. And when I was the furthest from God, that's when he was the closest because God didn't come to get me when I was doing all the good stuff. He died for me when I was his enemy. 
For God commended his love towards us in that while we were his enemies, he died for us. He didn't die for us when he was his friends. He didn't die for his friends. Jesus did not die for his friends. Jesus died for his enemies. He died for his enemies. That's how much he loved us, right? So the critical piece in this is that's the ultimate light. That's the ultimate truth that no matter how much the devil lies to you and tells you that God doesn't love you, that your way is the right way, <laughs> God died for you when you were going astray. Nobody could tell me that God don't love me. The ultimate controversy is that Satan the liar tells us that God is not fair and he don't know what he's doing and he doesn't love us. But that can't be true if he sent his son in the world, not for his friends, but while we're in the midst of darkness and his enemy. Love is not love until, you, until, until it's your enemy. Yeah. People say they love you all. This, they could, people will say they love you all they want until they're uncomfortable. But when God got uncomfortable, he got himself on the cross and died for our sins. Bless those that curse you and do good to those that revile you. That's what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. And that kind of love can only come from above. Guys, it's been awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. It has been a powerful a lesson and and I felt in my spirit to take my time tonight and it it never ceases God never ceases uh to to disappoint he never ceases to disappoint told past tes testimonials of God's goodness to help others to seek him yeah yeah Jesus is the light Jesus is the light and not just Jesus is the light not his glory what is his glory his glory is the process in which he came. The word became flesh and dwelt among us to be killed by us so that we can be brought closer. <sighs> That's the light. That's the insurmountable evidence that, that God's way is way better, way better, way better than ours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, guys. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you so much for having um, Yasmin come on tonight. I really, really appreciate her connection and her company. And, and I pray that we really, really have a great week. I pray for her and her family in, in their bereavement process. And be with all those who watch tonight. Um, I, I pray that you have a word from for them in Jesus' name. Amen. Good night, everybody. Amen. Good night, Maya. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Yeah. Happy Sabbath, K Boogie. <laughs>